And then if the feeling stays there, I say, okay, brain, like, let's figure out, can I do this? What do I need to do this? You know, is this a good idea? Is this a bad idea? But if the feeling is there, I know it's, it's there for a reason in a way. And, and then again, same thing, I could have a feeling I don't, you know, I, I don't know from my brain when it's going to come or go, but the feeling always tells me this is what, this is what's going to happen. Welcome to Whole and Unleashed, a podcast about coming home to ourselves. I'm your host, Jessica Locke, a holistic mindset, strala yoga, and human design guide. This podcast is not about telling you what to do. It's about sharing stories and tools to connect to your inner wisdom and maybe give you an extra nudge towards living wholeheartedly. Because deep down, only you know what's best for you. We'll be talking mindset, business, recovering from burnout, human design, transitions, and so much more. Let's dive in, shall we? Hi friends, welcome, welcome to this new season of Whole and Unleashed. I'm so excited to share this episode with my friend Tara Stiles. And she was one of the first guests that came to the podcast a few years ago when I first started and I was super nervous and I reached out to her. And you know, it's been a few years, so I wanted to check in to see how she's doing, what she's up to, and also weave in some human design elements because I've been curious about her chart and her energetics. We did a little IG live in the summer. I might try to find that audio and share it here. So in case you want to listen to that conversation, she's a three, six emotional projector. And we talk about her emotional authority, how feelings guide her. We also hear her 1762, the channel of the acceptance. I really see that energy play out in the way that she has created structure, put together Strala Yoga, you know, from her past experiences of seeing what worked, what didn't work in the yoga community, how to move away from some abusive practices to one that really centers us connecting to ourselves. And then I also heard her 1949 channel of synthesis, a community channel that is all about like, what are our values? How do we connect with others? How can we support each other? And that comes through so strongly in the way that she connects with other in the way she supports other and also her 3313 channel. Um, the channel of the prodigal about listening to other stories, reflecting, sharing that through her podcast, through her work with Sibi and, you know, a lot of different things. I'm so excited to share this conversation with you because I feel like Tara is such a beautiful representation of the power of an aligned projector because I've gotten a lot of people writing to me or clients where they feel like as a projector there's a lot of limitations on how our energy works on how we move around the world but just from watching tara she shows us how we can actually move our energy do the things we want to do in a way that is sustainable as long as we can take care of center of ourselves we can really accomplish a lot as long as we're following you know that inner guidance that inner pull so without further ado, here's the episode. Hi, Tara. Thank you so much for coming back to the Whole and Unleash podcast. Oh my gosh. I'm, I'm so excited to be here. I feel like I get to be kind of a regular recurring guest on your show. So thanks so much. <laughs> you were one of the first guests here because I was like, oh, I want to start a podcast. I'm like, who can I think of? And I'm like, Tara, she has so much to share. So thank you. Thank you for building this little block with me. <laughs> Oh my gosh. No, of course. I'm so inspired by everything you do. Oh, likewise. And a little introduction for those who haven't listened to the first episode. You are the founder of Strala Yoga, author of many, many best-selling books like Clean Mind, Clean Body. And I know you have a couple of books that are coming up soon too. <laughs> Speaker, guide, mother, wife, friend. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yeah. We all do so many things. <laughs> I know <laughs> we're so many roles and we did a mini human design session earlier. I think it was this summer. I've lost yeah. track of time and 
I just wanted to weave in some of those elements. A lot of the people who have been finding me are, you know, doing human design and also yoga. And they're like, oh, that is so cool. How do I empower, come back to myself? And I think you're such a beautiful representation of how to do things sustainably, especially mm -hmm. finding out that you're a projector, a three, six for those that are more familiar with the human design language. And yeah. I'm excited to ask more about like, ooh, how do you move your energy? How do you nourish yourself? But yeah, what have you been up to? <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, first of all, that chat with you about human design, I knew it was going to be cool and interesting. Like I would learn things about you and about your interests and about human design. But what really happened for me, and I'm sure this happens with a lot of people that you, you know, work with and this was it felt like a big therapy session. So, you know, in, in a really good way, like it felt like, you know, being empowered through these things that are going on with me that I may not be aware of, of putting in these brackets of, you know, how, how it's all arranged within human design. And plus you are very sensitive and caring and open. So I think for anybody sort of wanting to do more with you with that, I would say totally go for it. It's not another thing to do. It's, it's another thing to do that really gives you a lot of information and feel good tools to, to sort of move forward. So thanks for that. It was like, oh my gosh, this just happened. I told Mike about it. Like, oh my gosh, like this is going on. This makes so much sense. And it felt really empowering. So thank you. Oh, thank you. And I, I know I've shared this a few times, but so much of the way that I guide and lead people is through the foundations of Strala mm. Yoga. Do you want to share a little bit more like, you know, this system that you just kind of not system, you know, this way of being that you started to weave together. And I think it just, it's something that even started a as you as a little kid, you know, I know you shared a story of like yeah. how you were like connecting to yourself and how can I share that with others? So yeah, like, I guess in your words, Strala Yoga, what is it? How did it come together? And what? Yeah. Oh my gosh, you're so nice. Well, it's been quite a bit of time now since we started and, you know, meeting you at one of the trainings and so many people doing this, it's, it's almost given me this chance to reflect on this feeling of, wow, that's how I felt. And now I see it, not just in myself, but other people leading and, you know, how the energy of it really feels. And, and it was always this feeling for me again, since I was a little kid. And I think a lot of people have this experience as kids, you know, these little fleeting moments of, wow, I feel connected to the world and something larger. And I feel like I have a lot of energy inside of me and i I really want to use that for good in the world. And that was kind of the baseline gigantic kind of feeling. And when I got introduced to yoga as a teenager, it was a really simple, beautiful class in my dance school. And I thought, this is amazing. This feels exactly like that feeling, but there's this thing, there's this way to practice this. And then I thought, well, gosh, why, why doesn't everybody do this? Why isn't this just as normal as drinking water? And then I think similar to a lot of people, I started getting in, interested and in just looking around anywhere there was anything with yoga or healing or the healing arts or just kind of figuring out all this stuff, finding out about what was happening. And I saw how powerful something can be like yoga and then also how people can abuse that power, just like in everything else, <laughs> just oh every God. other thing we do in life. So I thought, well, this is interesting yoga taught in a way that feels abusive is physically rigid and mentally dogmatic and feels like somebody's trying to control you in a way. And I thought, well, yoga is amazing. And I had this great experience in one class. I said, well, how come that can't be everywhere? So I just started when I was learning more about yoga, filtering out the things that I saw were essentially wrong with it or being things that were certain teachers were taking advantage of, like pushing people into poses, just physical things yeah. and saying, well, I know your body better than you, or you should be feeling this way at this particular place in the class. And all of these strange things that I guess just get passed down. People end up saying them without even thinking sometimes. So I thought a lot about in the beginning of what not to do, what I don't want to see happen. And it was basically a lot of the opposite of what I saw happen in so many 
different practices. And then once I kind of filtered that out, I was noticing, oh, I'm doing a lot of these things that I do want to see happen, like moving your whole body together every single moment along the way, not just trying to get into a pose and then kind of get into the most extreme version that you can physically yeah. possible. Yeah. And yeah. I, that was how I approach yoga at the beginning. That's <laughs> how it was taught. It was so mechanical, mm. but something about the way you let it and straw the structure was like, no, connect to your body. It's safe to be there. And I'm like, mm. oh, it is I'm like, wait, <laughs> I, it, it, I can listen to my body. Mm. That, you know, that seems so like mind blowing and simple at the same time. And I know you got a lot of pushback at the beginning. And for a lot of people listening, you know, they're starting out with their business sometimes, and they just want to set out to do good in the world. They want to share mm -hmm. with people, and then they get pushback, and it can be discouraging. How did you still find ways to ground into yourself to know that, no, this is my truth? especially mm. from like mentors that were like, no, Tara, what are you doing? And then later, you know, the New York Times being like, you're the yoga rebel. You're like, why is this late? Am I trying? It wasn't something you were even trying to do, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I, I always had this since I started doing it. I knew I was doing the opposite of what so much that I would see was. So I knew that certain people were going to say, what the heck are you doing? I don't like that. You need to do it like we're doing it. We're the ones in charge. And who are you to go and try to even teach yoga now? So I knew I anticipated it. But mm -hmm. at the same time, when it started coming, it, of course, didn't feel good. But there was this big part of me that knew that I was trying to actually change yoga and change how people felt about yoga and sort of, you know, it sounds so corny, but like, liberate yoga in a way for everyone that was almost like I think I had it on my one of my early websites like yoga is for everyone <laughs> you know and, and now that's so common and so everywhere but almost back then and this was only 20 years ago but there was this overtone that yoga is this very important thing that you need to put your whole life in a category and you need to find somebody to mentor you and almost I mean I would see friends come out of long retreats or programs and I would bump into them in the grocery store and they would just look confused. And I said, I bet that person just came out of a yoga training. <laughs> and I would often say like, Hey, what are you doing? Oh, I, I just took this really intense, you know, yoga training for like a month somewhere. And I'm, I have so much more to learn and I'm so small. And it, I, I just saw yoga shrinking people in a way where it shouldn't do that. And like, obviously anything that has power, there's going to be people to take advantage of it. But I just saw this huge need for myself to kind of get this going for people to say, you know, we can practice yoga in a way that we notice how we feel. We don't need somebody to tell us how we feel. It doesn't mean you always feel good or you always feel bad, but you can actually, it's like you said, safe to listen to yourself while you're moving. And and we can change how we feel about yoga. We can also change how we lead yoga. So mm -hmm. I knew that I was doing something that didn't exist. And But in my mind, I thought, well, this needs to exist. So I think for anybody starting something with that kind of big mission or passion, it's going to feel like that. And hopefully the energy to, to keep going and to move forward is bigger and stronger than the um, scary things that, that come at you with people saying, why are you doing this? And they'll tear you down in all kinds of ways forever. Mm -hmm. But you know, that, that strength will, will be bigger just naturally will. Yeah. And hopefully help tune out the noise sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And also like, you know, being a projector, a lot of the people who come to me, just like similar to yoga, they have some discouraging beliefs like, oh, I'm supposed to, you know, the best way to move the energy as a projector is to be invited in, as opposed to telling people like, come do the thing, come do the thing. I've seen you, even the way you lead Shrela, you just lead it. You just went to the park and you're like, hey, anybody want to join? Come along. And mm -hmm. do you notice this kind of dynamic in the way that you show up and like where you're doing your thing and then people's be like, hey, Tara, what are you up to? Is that something mm. that you've noticed along the way? Yeah, that's happened definitely more the more experience I got leading. At first, I really felt it was important for me to almost get out of the way and let the class be for the people. And that's kind of what I had in my vision about doing it. And then I realized, oh, it's actually this dance. It's 
you know, it's really important to, if you're leading anything to know what you're doing and to take somebody through a process, you know, there has to be something that happens, <laughs> but essentially you have to also, it was very important for me to not just tell people what the process was, but to participate it in it at the same time while also leading it. Mm -hmm. And once I really started getting interested in that and kind of digging into how that feels and moving around the room in that way, it doesn't mean that I'm doing all of the yoga poses at the front and all the movements like, you know, um, a mechanical thing, um, demonstrating everything, but it means I'm just involved in what I'm leading at the same time. And I think that's true for really leading anything in a really engaged way. So that dance, that participating in what's happening just started to become really fun. And also, you know, I guess in a way keeping, it doesn't even feel like keeping my energy up. It just feels like, well, yeah, if you lead in this way, you you do feel sustained by what you're doing. And also the other people in the class are giving you this energy while you're also helping them find it for themselves. So it feels very sustainable and fun and enjoyable process to, to really lead anything for sure. Yeah. It feels like an, like an orchestra, <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. everybody's part and you're just like kind of dancing around it. Um, and some of the things that you weave into like Strala was also Tai Chi. Can you explain a little bit? Like, how did you, you know, find Tai Chi and Shiatsu and like all these different healing modalities into one that really supports our well-being like puts us in the center instead of like giving our power away and like following what somebody else is doing yeah so I think similar to you with human design once you find one practice that really is awesome for you and for me that first practice was yoga you start to kind of look look around and say well what are all the other things <laughs> you know and are they separate is it you know, can you do both? Is it okay? Are you combining? Are you blending? You know, what's going on? So the, the more I kind of dug into the healing arts and Tai Chi is a great thing to know for life because it shows you just really clearly what happens with your breath and your body and your mind and your emotions while you're moving. And I'm like, oh, that, that really makes sense with yoga. And yoga is amazing, I believe, because you can do so many different things. You can, you know, be on your feet, you can be on one hand, you can be on the floor. The vocabulary is really incredible for your well-being and how it feels emotionally. But Tai Chi has this awesome practical how to do it all. It's almost like a blueprint or an owner's manual of how to move your body and how to mm -hmm. feel in your body and how to get it all to work. So even the concept of conservation of energy, you know, don't spend any extra energy doing that warrior two than you need. And that's a really hard one to do. If you're just doing yoga and you're thinking, okay, I'm, I got to do it right. I'm staying here. You know, then your mind says, okay, like flex your muscles a little more, but Tai Chi says, resist that urge so you can stay longer and feel better, but also achieve more in the long run. So it really gave me not just a vocabulary, but a practice that really is somebody's taking a, a yoga class with me. They won't say, oh, I'm learning Tai Chi. They'll be like, oh, that felt good. you know. <laughs> so it's right. not to kind of try to show people, at least for me, I'm not teaching the Tai Chi forms or, you know, the dance that people do in the park and all of that, which is, which is the sort of the physical expression of, of the blueprint that Tai Chi really shows. But, you know, for, for me with, within what I do, it's sort of like, why wouldn't you want to know that your breath can move your body because that helps you be a better person and friend and partner and parent and everything. And you don't run out of energy in the day. And same thing with shiatsu learning that has been <clears throat> just such an awesome way to inform how I connect with people, mm -hmm. not just through physical touch and a yoga class. You know, again, I would lean on somebody's back in a pigeon pose and they may not say, Oh, you're doing shiatsu to me. You know, right. so they say, Oh, that felt really great or something happened or I felt something. And it's because I've learned how to connect with myself and then lean on somebody with the right pressure, maybe in the right place or make better guesses about sort of what to do mm -hmm. when you're physically making contact with people for mm -hmm. sure. And those, I, I find that those practices, those principles can be translated to like real life lessons, even, you know, mm -hmm. in a business meeting or when yeah. you're out about, it's like, oh, how do we position in a body 
in a way that we feel safe or away from somebody we don't want to talk to or no and also like make decisions for ourselves that are more centered and grounded because I feel overextended often it's so easy to get distracted because there's so much inspiration out there there's also a lot of noise so Mm -hmm. even those principles of like what is my center do you find that when you're making big decisions like you know moving decisions business decisions how do you you know in turn stay in your center exactly what you said everything for me it's sort of every moment is just as important as every other moment so you know, this is a silly thing, but this morning, uh, Daisy's school has once a week, all the kids get together in the morning and the parents are invited to the morning circle. And it's always this funny thing where the parents kind of stand around and you know, some of them, you don't know some of them and the kids all come in and everybody's worried if their kid is okay. And this whole thing, there's a lot of like nervous energy. So today, you know, Mike and I were standing there and, you know, a few people waved to me, but then they turned and like walked away. I'm like, oh, they're not going to come talk to me. <laughs> and I'm like, you know what I can do right now? I can center myself. So there was actually a window ledge. So I just, I just sat a little bit on the window ledge and breathed and connected myself. And then there was a, a, a woman nearby me eventually, and she looked really nervous. And I just asked her, you know, if she was ready for the winter break and yeah. it really broke the ice. And she totally opened up to me you know, I found out all this information about her. I shared, you know, what's going on with us and that wouldn't have happened. I wouldn't have been able to make a good connection if I was just, you know, if I didn't center myself. So Mm -hmm. I feel like when I see those moments where I'm doing a good job in it, I know that, yeah, of course, when it comes to making a business decision or figuring out where to move, it's, it's kind of all the same thing. It's like, oh, I have an idea can I center myself and then act on the idea or I want to do a partnership with somebody? Let me think about the best ways to reach out and then I'll center myself and then, you know, move forward from there. So it kind of all becomes practice in a way and that becomes really fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's like yoga is just a part of life. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Um, As part of, you know, your chart for people who are still listening and want to know a little bit, a lot of the ways that you, make decisions it helps for you to really it's you're guided by your emotional authority so you know you go through the wave where something feels very exciting and then sometimes you might feel like oh no this doesn't feel as exciting and giving yourself time to honor to make those decisions are you able to I guess I'm like I want to ask about your past and the present but you know growing up was that something you noticed that like the emotional wave was kind of there in the backdrop always telling you like guiding you on like this is a good idea this is a bad idea sit wait for it until you kind of reach the middle and you're like okay I know what I want to Mm. do now yeah I I definitely resonate um you know again I think this is a huge therapy session when you're like reading okay you make decisions emotionally (laughs) oh my gosh I do (laughs) so it's cool to have that sort of, it's like putting on a shirt, like, okay, I've got this shirt on. I'm that person. I, I definitely do that. So I've, I've noticed that again, looking back and then everything that's happening now is always, I, I feel like doing something like with dance or, uh, you know, getting into expanding my horizons from there and like learning where the yoga things were and moving to New York. It was all like a gut feeling. I want to do this. Yes. Okay. Yes. Now I need to kind of figure it out. But it's sort of like, I definitely have the feeling and the feeling is always there. And then if the feeling stays there, I say, okay, brain, like, let's figure out, can I do this? What do I need to do this? You know, is this a good idea? Is this a bad idea? But if the feeling is there, I know it's, it's there for a reason in a way. And, and then again, same thing. I could have a feeling. I don't, you know, I I don't know from my brain when it's going to come or go, but the feeling always tells me Mm -hmm. this is what this is what's going to happen next. And I sort of, it's almost like, you know, there's a little small friend in my tummy saying like, you got to go over here, you got to do that. And then I just figure out like how to, how to, how to, you know, work for that person in my tummy and tell them like, okay, this, okay, we'll figure it out. Hold on a second. Let me like send some emails. (laughs) Well, yeah, I feel like the ways you have able to make things happen or the way you move your life has been very, 
full of ease and I'm just watching from the outside. Mm -hmm. You can tell me that I'm wrong. You're like, no, there has been stressful moments as well. But yeah, just like, I love that you share, like the feeling is there. It's almost like the thing that grounds you because mm -hmm. some of the things that they talk about in human design, like don't use your mind to make decisions. And I'm like, well, the mind mm -hmm. does try to help. Sometimes it does try to, you know, go in another direction, even though our body is telling us not to. So I love that you kind of root yourself in your feeling and then explain the process like, yeah. And then I let the mind play along because it's also important. It's not about shutting the mind and just listen to your into. They're not a different voice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So oh, I, yeah. If, I think that gets really confused for, especially now with like the internet and everything, but I definitely saw that even 20 years ago with yoga, like people walking around being like, I just feel like I need to be here. And I'd be like, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, you need, like, yes, you have a feeling, but then you also have this amazing brain, whatever yes. capacity your brain is to, you know, to make it, make it normal, make it work for you, make, make yourself possible to exist in the world in whatever way that you want to be, you know, perhaps, but you need to use your brain. Otherwise it's, it, it, it's not, it's just strange. It's not yeah. going to work. I guess. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. And also like not sustainable too, mm -hmm. because, you know, sometimes a lot of people that sometimes come to me, they're burnt out. We've tried to like fit and we're trying to catch up and trying to do all the things. And sometimes mm -hmm. it comes from a really good place, but not being able to check in with ourselves or have that space to do so. And I love how you role model that. And even now, you know, you're, you have a couple of updates coming up. You just changed the name to your podcast as well. Do you want to share a little bit behind it? <laughs> sure. Yeah. I, you know, during the pandemic, um, a podcast, you know, network or whatever emailed me about doing a podcast and I hadn't done one before because I never, I, I, I mean, I love listening to podcasts. I love listening to conversations. And I thought, well, I know it takes a lot of effort to make something really good. You have to have conversations every week with somebody. And if I was interviewing authors, I'd want to make sure I, I would read their book before I talk to them. And how am I going to do that every single week? That's a lot of books. You know? yeah. <laughs> so I didn't want to do it in a way that wasn't feeling good. So I came up with this concept to interview people sometimes, and then also just do episodes about feeling better. And with a podcast agency, we came up with this title, Feel Better. And I thought, well, that's nice. And like, I can kind of do that. And it was fun. And I did it for a while. And then I interviewed my friend, Kimberly Shannon Murphy. And she wrote this book, Glimmer, about her story of like overcoming abuse. And this like, I'm, and I've also known her in New York, like 20 years ago, when we were first kind of starting out doing all these things. I'm like, Kim, I had no idea. And I'm so happy that she wrote this book. And she has a big, successful career in stunts. And I thought, well, Kim's just like, you know, she's stepping forward as herself. And why am I, you know, again, like hiding behind this title of like, feel better. And like, not that it's a bad title, but I was like, I just want to use this area of exploration and play to just talk about whatever I want to talk about mm -hmm. and interview people that I'm interested in. Yeah. And if people want to listen, they can. I mean, no one's forcing anybody to listen to a podcast. <laughs> so it's like, and I don't have, it's not you know, something that I need to be a certain way. So I just was like, I can give myself this freedom. It's mm -hmm. fine. So I just took my own advice on it and just, you know, changed the name. It was a no brainer for me. Oh, so congratulations. <laughs> I love that. I heard a little bit stiff. I'm like, oh, I loved it. It's so empowering because so many mm -hmm. times it's hard to, it's scary to put ourselves out there. Yeah. Yeah. So just by role modeling and we also talked about it in our mini IG life, but you are three, six profile and the profile is kind of like the theme of how you share your energy. So with a six line, you go through three different phases in your life. The first 30 years, almost like experimenting, playing, throwing spaghetti at the wall <laughs> where you had like, you know, a lot of different jobs and just trying to see what feels the best. And then in the second phase where you're on the roof, where it's a little bit more, you know, you're retreating, you're in a cocoon and you're towards the end of the roof process and you're coming mm. down to engage and you're like, okay, I'm going to come down, engage with the world again. And are you feeling the shift of energy? I, I can see the way that you're gravitating, the projects that you're moving, that you're like, hello, <laughs> I'm ready. I have a little bit more energy. <laughs> oh, I mean, you just hit the nail for me. It's, it's wild. It feels very um, exciting for me right now, just in my own 
body and in, just in talk, like today we went to the post office and I was mailing hats and the post office guy told Mike, he was standing with me like, how many cups of coffee did you give this girl this morning? <laughs> like, you need to take away the coffee from her. I'm like, I just had one. I'm happy to be here, you know? So I know it's, it's a very big, exciting phase for me and, and, and things are happening again in my life. Also, like we're all, I know the pandemic's been over for a while, but I felt like my experience of it in the beginning of being over was going out. And like, we had this big event in Berlin and we were all still in that cocoon phase, even though there were so many of us, we were just hugging all the time and like, you know, holding on to each other and it was emotional and, and those things. And I feel like now everything that I'm interested in doing and am sort of co-creating in the world is a big celebration and bringing people together and connecting people and, I love doing that. I've always loved doing that, but I feel like I have this surge of energy to be doing even more of that right now. So there's just a lot of cool projects happening and, um, you know, random post office coffee shop encounters <laughs> town where I'm overly excited for sure. <laughs> I'm sure they got a little buzz of your energy as well. <laughs> I'll be back there soon to check it. <laughs> Yeah, maybe they'll ask you what your what's your secret and you can share. So those are the opportunities where you're just kind of being yourself and people are like, what is it? What's your secret? And you're like, just <laughs> just having space to be me. Yeah, yeah. I'll I'll give them a a trial for the yoga app and then or like I'll do a little breathing with them and then yeah, that's usually a good chance to teach some yoga for sure. Oh yes. <laughs> I know you also have some um book clubs or you're participating, working with Zibi. Do you want to talk a little bit more about this collaboration? Sure. Yeah. I met Zibi a couple of years ago during the pandemic. She interviewed me for a book I wrote with the National Geographic, collaborated with them. And she's felt really familiar to me, somebody that just had a lot of energy and wanted to do stuff. And her, her stuff was reading. And I just started to get to know her more and more. And she said, Tara, I just want to help people read more. And I said, Zibi, I just want to help people do yoga in a way that feels like them more. <laughs> and I'm like, let's just do stuff together. So she does so many things in books and she has a publishing company and she's a many time author herself and does a lot of events. So we're collaborating with her on a lot of her events and, you know, bringing uh, sort of book themed yoga classes to the Strala Yoga app a lot and you know, which is really fun. And I feel like I don't want to pressure our folks to, you know, read so much because if they're anything like me, I, I want to read more, but I don't want to feel bad if I'm not reading yeah. a book a month or a book a week or a book a day or whatever people do. It's like, that's so inspiring. Yeah. Um, but just having that little bit of inspiration and putting it in the yoga form and, and having these and her also, her tagline for her whole business is stories are best when shared. Mm -hmm. And so I just love that. It feels so inviting. And I've met so many interesting people through her communities also that have, have started practicing Strala Yoga. And there are a lot of writers, a lot of readers. And it's a great combination because they feel like they want to do yoga, but they've maybe felt intimidated before with trying some kind of yoga that they felt they didn't connect with. And this is so much about with Strala, you know, noticing how you feel that that's kind of, you know, writers are already right there with like, yes, I notice how I feel all the time. And but yeah. I never had a physical practice to that. And just was sitting a lot um, with reading and writing. It's, a, it's good to move your body, but they don't feel punished or like it's a calories in calories out kind of thing. It's more about taking care of yourself and and enjoying and, and having the joy and the the well-being in your body and mind and spirit and all of that. So I'm just having so much fun with her community and introducing her to people in our community and saying, oh, you need to meet and you two need to meet and you two need to meet. It's like yeah. a lot of that sort of, you know, spider webbing happening right now. And it's so fun. She sent, I connected her with my friend, Amy, who has this really cool non-toxic nail salon in New York. And we're doing an event on Monday because I just wanted an excuse to take Daisy into the city <laughs> for Christmas and, you know, just walk around and see the lights and all of that. So I said, Amy, do you want to do um, an event to celebrate your new salon in the East Village? And I can give a little bit of a chat on mindfulness and a little softness practice and then interview you because she's so interesting and has this incredible story. And she's 
first generation Chinese American, like really doing cool things. And um, I just want to, you know, be like, look, she's amazing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so I invited, you know, everybody that I knew in the city. So everybody's coming together. So it's sort of like, I was telling Mike, like, I'm kind of throwing a holiday party <laughs> at my friend's place, you know? And so I invited Zibby and Zibby couldn't come, but I connected them on email literally this morning at like five in the morning, Zibby sent Amy this email with like 10 ideas that they could do together. Oh. So it's sort of like, yeah, I just feel like there's, we all already know so many interesting, awesome people. We don't really have to even think outside of our zone of, you know, I don't need to reach out to like the president or something. I can just, you know, there's so many people that are amazing. Like maybe we'll, you know, you just keep bumping out like more and more people that you don't know yet. And that, that sort of comfort zone just keeps expanding. So it's just, yeah, I just love how all of that's possible. If you just give it a try. Yeah. You're also <laughs> such a super connector. Like I've seen it, like with me, you've introduced me to people and you're like, Hey, what are you up to? Anything you need help with? How can I share? And this, this is just kind of, you know, such a gentle, but empowering way to invite people into like, Hey, how can I support you? How can I, you know, support each other, lean onto each other. And it's just, it sounds so simple, but people are like, you know, breaking their brains, trying to like, how do I grow? How do I reach and help more people? I don't know who to help. And you're like, just start with ourselves and then the next friend and then the next friend. Yeah. And then it just builds like a really nice, beautiful web. Something that I've always been curious about. And I, I think I've asked, you know, especially with Strala, it's become such a beautiful network of guides. And I'm sure it's attracted a lot of business growth opportunities mm -hmm. about like, oh, you can open so many Strala stores. You can do that. Like, am I wrong? Like, I'm sure you've gotten a lot of big opportunities to grow fast or to, you know, mm -hmm. sell the brand or do something. What helps you <laughs> make your decision of like, uh, yes or no? Oh, well, for in the beginning, it was a little harder. It was sort of like when I would get those like negative comments, it almost felt like negative comments, even though it's such a positive thing. Like it's obviously very flattering if somebody wants to scale your business or buy it, whatever, all those things. But in the beginning, it felt more like, oh, I, I, of course, should be doing these things. So I went down the rabbit hole of taking all the meetings and I would go to like the 80th floor of some building and somebody would hand me like a booklet with like, you know, my future in front of it, according to them. <laughs> yeah. And then I, I just feel like I got lucky. I was so busy with all these projects that I could literally say like, oh, I, I don't have time to stay at this meeting for more than 30 minutes because I'm going to the airport. And I would put the little binder in my suitcase and like, head off to the airport. And then I would think, well, that just, it was very exciting, but none of that felt right for me. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, again, what we were talking about just before, kind of looking around at our existing community, why do we need a bunch of people that are outside of us to grow us? Like we literally don't. So I'm like, holy cow, like looking around, there's so many of us right now, like you I, you know, I know you do so many things, but you're, I want to interview you on my podcast for this if that's okay, but like you're <laughs> responsible, like you've, you've created so much of what people see visually on, from the calendar to online to like what people see. And if I went outside and like went to some agency to do that, it would look like Shake Shack. <laughs> like it would look like Soul Cycle, which are great brands. Like I love Shake Shack and whatever, it's fine. But like going within our existing community just to do stuff, yeah. um, you know, thinking about expanding the, the teacher network. I don't speak German. I love going to Berlin. We have Anna and Julia and, um, and Alex Meifert over there and Joanna and all these people. And, and Anna has really gone after doing these trainings and, and speaking in German. And, and she brings people that, that would love to do astrology training with me or with Mike, but they don't feel comfortable to be there for two weeks only hearing English. They're they're more, you know, native German speakers. So in the beginning, Anna would come with them and be translating word for word, like whispering. And I'm like, I think we could find a better way. So now she's has this great business for herself doing trainings. And it's cool because her husband is like business CEO guy. And he's like, you girls are figuring it out. And I'm like, <laughs> we are. <laughs> and and with the, you know, with the apparel side of things again it's not our main thing but it's really nice to have you know a t-shirt or whatever and it's really challenging to do that business from one place in america to reach the world so that's again something i'm doing 
with Anna in Germany and she has one of her guides at her studio that has a couple of kids now and doesn't really want to guide so many classes, but really wants to be involved. So she's literally going to be the one like mailing out all the stuff, oh. like headquarters of shipping are going to be at her house. And I'm like, mm -hmm. that's really cool. And then if it grows, we have a plan to move it to another place. And, but it's really neat to see, to have followed that feeling to now know that now I just delete the emails when they come in, unless it's something that makes a lot of sense, but it's really a lot easier to filter out what makes sense and what doesn't make mm -hmm. sense because we have this community support and and people, a lot of our, our people are yoga guides, but a lot of them can also do uh, and want to do other things. So I feel like just really lucky to, you know, meet people and be like, well, what else do you do? And like, how else can we work together or just how can I cheer on what you're doing? It doesn't always need to be like, okay, we're gonna like, <laughs> right. yeah. <laughs> that's what but, it feels like even any yeah. project you're like I have something do you have time to sounds kind of cool I'm like it just feels so easy and like no pressure in a way like we get to have fun and I see mm. everything every collaboration like it just looks fun I'm like it, it's possible to create like a mm. sustainable business to live to survive to mm. really root it in community and grow intentionally because we hear those butts where it's like intentional growth but and then you see them scaling and then they start kind of losing the the core of it it's like somebody else answering messages but I'm like mm -hmm. it's mainly you and Mike this is like yeah. you guys are supporting a network of so many guys but also you're leaning onto each other so you're not like you know on top of whatever pyramid that a lot yeah. of structures are built yeah I never wanted to be in those early meetings I knew enough about some of these. I mean, I read Steve Jobs's biography or whatever. I don't know if that was an autobiography or biography, but like where he got fired from Apple. And I'm like, not that we're like Apple, but I'm like, that would be me. Like I would get fired from <laughs> Strala if I like did, did it the other way and brought in outside people because there would be meetings where you're just sitting there deciding about what color something should be or this, or it becomes at least for if you're going to scale something, it becomes the business becomes about making as much money as possible for your investors or and also growing as fast as possible, which, you know, in nature, I mean, that's what's so cool. Like you and I and and, and a lot of the people in our community, we we love to learn about nature and Ayurveda and all these things and shiatsu. And it says like you you can't just, you know, it takes a whole season to grow. And I think I got lucky also my mom's brothers and my grandmother all being farmers and I'm just looking at the fields and be like okay you plant the seed yeah. <laughs> wait for it to grow you don't just do it all in a day <laughs> you hack it you biohack it <laughs> yes when you biohack it it's stressful and those things fail all the time and I'm like I don't want this to fail because I want to be able to do this and I want this to be really nice and I don't want it to turn into like I mean this sounds so like tech company but like so many of these businesses that take all of this funding, they just become like a, a, an email list at the end of the day that you end up selling to some other company. And it, it's, that's so like yucky to me. Like, I just, I'm not in it for that. <laughs> like, yeah. like I, I'm really grateful that, you know, we can pay our bills and I'm, I'm even more grateful that I can teach other people how to do that within leading yoga and all of the things that I've learned. So it's sort of like, why can't we just like pass on the information and like live nice lives. And, you know, it's definitely possible. You don't have to sit in a, you know, a, 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 you don't have to sit and suffer. There is a way to, you know, live a nice life and be sustainable and figure it out, you know? So it's, it's definitely possible for mm -hmm. not just for me, but for, you know, for, for a lot of people that want to do something like this and yeah, everybody has a different path, but it's it's always possible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When I first learned about the concepts of ease and softness, having come from like a very corporate world and the way I was raised, I'm like you push, you go, you know, you do what you can. And then like the the softening was kind of like disarming. I'm like, it is possible to soften. And I see how you carry that in your life. And even when you share about Daisy and the way, you know, the lesson she's giving you, I'm like, there's so much softness and ease. Is that something, you know, a big part of your, I guess, I'm like the big word legacy, what you want to leave mm -hmm. behind or what you're, you know, yeah. the ripple that you want to share? Oh, yeah. Like a million percent. I mean, I notice how much it works. Like I don't have to be 
perfect at it in order to try my best at it. And then I see her and she's so much better at it because she's like, just not lived that long. And she'll be like, <laughs> oh, I'm supposed to be nice to the plants, the animals and the people. And I'll get an email from her. I got an email from her teacher like two days ago. And they have these little, I didn't even know about it. Like these little stuffed animals, each kid gets to take it home for a week. And they like write a little thing about what they did, whatever. Oh. And, and the teacher told me, that Daisy, it was her turn to take home the, the stuffed animals. But then she saw another kid in the class crying that they didn't get to take them home. And the kid was really upset. So Daisy went and gave the kid the stuffed animals. And she's like, just take them. I'll have my turn <laughs> some other time, you know? And and the teacher was like, it was so like, I've never seen anybody do that. Like she just did that. And she's always doing things like that. And I'm like, okay, it's working. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure like she's got her own I, you know, it's not a hundred percent like what I'm trying to show, but I see, you know, in talking with you and yesterday I had a zoom with Anna and it's like, I see the people that I've supposedly taught doing it so much better than me. And then they, and, and in a way where, and then I learn back from what people are doing. So it's sort of like, it's really cool. Like if you just do these things that we're all talking about, you know, we all, get better at certain things of them, then we can all continue to learn from them because that's kind of something I love about learning yoga and, and softness in this way. There isn't like, okay, I've totally got it. Like I don't have to learn it anymore. And it's not like, oh, there's so much more to learn. I feel bad about myself, but you're always practicing. You're always improving. You're always doing stuff. So you just start to notice, like I notice where my rigidity is a lot. And I notice where my, like, where my own pushing is a lot, where my own, like, oh, I need it to be this way. And I'm like, oh no, like I can move back a little bit and go around. And so, yeah, it's really cool to have this community with Daisy and with, with everybody in Strala, you know, so we could be like, oh, you're doing that. You know, like I'll go to Berlin and, and have dinner with Joanna, who has this Strala studio. And I'll, you know, I'll say like, oh, so how are you doing? And she's like, well, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm like, oh, you're doing it to me. <laughs> you know, but she's such a good listener. And, you know, it's really cool. It's just sort of finding, finding people that want to be doing this together. And then we're all sort of doing our best to just be in the world in a, in a good way. And it's cool. It's, it's life affirming and it's positive to be around people like that for sure. So I just feel really grateful to have this you know, community of folks doing it. Mm, yeah. Speaking of community, you also have the Strala app with new classes every week. Do you want to expand on that? So for people who are listening, they're like, I want to join a community like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on down. I mean, that's been a dream of ours since 10 years ago, having the studio in New York. And we were always thinking, oh, it'd be so nice if people that write us emails could come. And it's such a special thing to come to New York. It's expensive. And if you, unless you live there and it's still expensive, but it's just a special thing. So having the app now, it's awesome because we can have, you know, a few live classes every week and then new classes all the time and all of the thousands of practices that we have organized. And because the technology is just at the right time right now, like it's really easy to chat with each other and have, it's almost like social media without any risk of, having anybody be rude to you <laughs> because you have, you have this like community board and there's there's a there's, it's like a robust community but there's not you're not going to get random people that don't understand what you're what you're trying to do with yourself there so it's sort of like when you come in it's like all right like this is a positive place like I know how to act in this room and you know it's been like that in our real person community too it's you know a lot of folks are like okay, so how come there's no drama and no scandals and no kind of, you know, icky things happening with, yeah. with our community? And I'm like, well, we all just try our best. You know? <laughs> like, we're just like trying our best. And if we mess up, we don't like get mad. We try to, oh, sorry. You know, you just kind of, you figure it out and, you know, we're just trying to be our best. And, and unfortunately, I don't, I don't think that that's happened much in a lot of, you know, wellness or yoga or other kind of communities so we're just like wow it's still working so yeah, so that yeah. happens online and we're just yeah we're really happy to have that space for sure yeah I can attest to that because I think seeing everybody so connected to themselves like they're standing their ground they're holding their power that when they do show up it's like hey it's like it's genuine connections 
in other yeah. places, you know, like you mentioned earlier, sometimes business world or different classes, there's always like a hierarchy. There's always like, oh, there's more to do. You don't know enough. Like you need more years to it. There's always that pressure of like not enough, but suddenly in Strala, because we have the tools to connect to ourselves, like know what is our center? How do we get comfortable with ourselves first before we expand? Especially knowing that so many people that come in are like, they want to help others. They want to change the world. Like, you know, we want to do good things, but we can't do it if we overextend ourselves. And that just seems that is something that keeps coming back over. It's like, no, you have to practice that. You have to practice that. And whenever I have time to tune in, I'm like 10 minute class, 15 minute or an hour. Like I love the Strala library because you're always creating new things. I'm like, I don't know where, <laughs> you know, you have so much energy to create like new things that are so supportive. And I can see when you're guiding the class, it, uh, you're in it with me. Like you're not just telling me what to do. <laughs> yeah, it's it's good for me too. And I always... I like to say that in the class or somewhere in the class and say like, you know, thank you for practicing with me because yeah, it's not like, oh, I'm doing this thing like for you. You're welcome. You know, like, <laughs> like it's good for me too. And you know, when you do something good for you and 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 good for yourself, it's good for the people around you. And then and then, you know, we're all there together. So it kind of fosters that desire to want to share and um, I mean, you know, Susie Barreto in Venezuela, she just wrote this book, A Good Earthling. And she sent us a copy, one in Spanish and one in English. Daisy's mm -hmm. learning Spanish. So I'm like trying to learn Spanish through her. And and so we shared it and Susie shared it in the app. And she's like, you know, it's so cool that I can share this book that I'm passionate about. And I I feel like, like you said, in most communities, there's this hierarchy where it's like, well, how important you have to be in so important enough to even get shared or something you know yeah. it's like you have to provide some sort of you know weird value it's like well everybody's valuable and if you do something that's interesting and if i can you know have a platform to share why wouldn't i share because i i got a copy of her book and i thought it was great you know we loved it so why wouldn't we just share it it's oh, easy yeah. and so many people in our community are you know they're so talented and doing interesting things and I mean, you kind of look around and we all want to, you know, those are the values that most of us are trying to have more in our lives, like support local artists and, you know, people that are doing cool things. And, you know, just looking around, I could, I could read people's books in our own community and have, you know, years worth of books already, or, or, you know, look at art and things like that. So everybody's, you know, so interesting that you know we're already connected to mm, yeah which is what you've been doing since it became cool <laughs> supporting local artists you know have you noticed all the trends you set <laughs> I don't know yeah it's sort of like we all we all are going there I feel like I don't know you probably have something in human design about that but I definitely feel like I've you know I'm in the right time in the world in a way where it's like you know, I don't think I'm the only one that wanted yoga to feel like this. It's sort of like you say something and people are like, oh yeah, I feel like that too. Oh yeah, I feel like that too. And you just find your people and then you may be the one that's doing it, but then you're also, you know, other people are supporting you doing something else. So I've definitely received, you know, more than my fair share, I feel of support from people in our community that have said, oh, you need to go talk to this person or I'm going to go connect you with this. And I'm like, really? Like, you're going to connect me with that? And yeah. and I'm like, wow. <laughs> so I've just been like blown away also by the support I've received to pull me in different directions too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What are some projects that you're able to share right now that you're excited about or looking forward into diving in? Yeah, well, I'm writing a new book and it's like, it's it's been an interesting process because it's taken so long and I have this really great literary agent that I didn't have for my other books and she's she's really making me like, like do a good job. Like I feel <laughs> like I've somehow skated through just doing these other books and she's like, no, no, like it has to be really good. And I'm like, really? <laughs> I can't just like send it out like we've done everything else. Yeah. So I feel like that's good for me to have that like focus and 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 time because it's all it's about softness. So it's going to be um again, I feel like softness is something that a lot of people are interested in now and thinking about and just this, like you said, culture of burnout and slowing down and 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 not slowing down to do nothing, but slowing down to achieve more. So 
So yeah, we're, we're working on that. Hopefully we haven't sold it yet. So I'm still working on the process of that, which has been a good challenge for me to like soften through this process oh, of, yeah. of not just like having it done, you know, I'm used to like, okay, let's get it done. And then we'll just do it and go promote it. And so that's been good for me. And then uh, we started uh, a bit of a, <clears throat> a space at our friend's farm, actually our friend that helped us build out the studio in New York city bought this farm in upstate New York and are kind of making it this animal sanctuary. And oh. they joked to me, like, we're going to build you a yoga studio. And I'm like, cool. And then they're like, no, 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 come over. We, we built it. <laughs> like, are you serious? So it's a beautiful space and we're doing classes and events and we'll have trainings there. So it's just a short train ride from New York city. And we're kind of calling it Strala farm. Oh. And we had this kind of soft opening with friends and family. And a lot of folks came that had been to the New York studio. And a lot of our, our friends said, this is like Strala 2.0. Like it just even more light, even more space. And it just, it feels like, you know, those Morgan Freeman movies where like he plays <laughs> God and he's just in some like big space. It's just like somewhere. And I'm like, that's kind of what it's like. <laughs> <laughs> and then you go outside and it's like horses and donkeys and you don't have to try to like, feel connected to yourself it just happened so so that's happening and and yeah kind of back in the world again with all the retreats and trainings and events and stuff so, yes yeah. you have a few in-person uh, trainings dolomites is that one of the retreats that is happening next year yeah so that's happening um my friend Erin lewis who used to guide classes at the studio in new york she went and followed her dream she moved to italy about 10 years ago and started a retreat business called Eat, Pray, Move. So I contacted her last year and we did something in Iceland, which was really fun. So, so nice. <laughs> it was so yeah, the Dolomites is our one this year. And then I'm doing another kind of different thing in September, a retreat with an author that I met at one of Zibby's events who did to me what I do to people. She like <laughs> pointed to me like across the room and she's like, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I do that to people. <laughs> <laughs> and she just like, you know, like pulled me in and she's like, we're going to do stuff together. And I'm like, oh. okay. Oh. So we're doing a, a retreat together in Tuscany and she'll teach a writing workshop and creativity. And I'll talk a little bit about that, but also have daily yoga classes and things like that. So that'll be different, but also really fun and, you know, similar, familiar too. So, and then another 200 hour training in Berlin and we have a, a weekend one in Geneva, Switzerland. So <laughs> Yeah, lots of fun things. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to see all the projects that you're trying out, expanding. Um, yeah, thank you so much for sharing, you know, updating us on what you've been up to and sharing your wisdom. <laughs> yeah, of course. I mean, it's like, it's so fun to talk to you all the time. But but yeah, I definitely want to borrow you from my podcast to ask you more questions about everything you're up to. Oh my as well. gosh, that would be an honor. I wanted to wrap this up with, if you were to say something to... 10 year old, five year old Tara, what would you tell her right now? What were you at? <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, I would just say, uh, wow. Well, that's the funny thing. Like, you don't want to say too much because you don't want to like alter the butterfly effect of time. Yes, <laughs> I know. <laughs> she must not know you're from the future. <laughs> right, right. I wouldn't say anything about yoga because that would be like, oh, okay, like what? I have to go find that. But I mean, mainly just you know, trust your intuition, like trust how you feel and you're right about that. And, you know, keep going and, um, you know, keep learning, keep improving, um, you know, find good people and just keep going. So. Thank you, Tara. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to the whole and unleashed podcast. If you're feeling pulled to get into action and want to connect women, check out the Align and Embody journal on wholeandunleashed.com. You'll also find resources on mindset, human design, and archive for past episodes of this podcast. And if you enjoyed this episode, please share, leave a comment or review on iTunes and Spotify. Thank you so much for tuning in and have a wonderful day wherever you are.